Hey everyone, it's Deja from crochetheraftercom Today we're going to be making this Solomon Knot scarf. So using any kind of special yarn, you'll see that this one has some sequins on it. You can make this scarf very quickly, very easily. Um, a drapey type yarn is best because it will drape nicely like a necklace. So try to get a silk yarn or something um, bamboo would work very well. So the pattern is below, so go ahead and download that and we'll get started. Okay, to begin our necklace, we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And if you're using the same yarn as I am with the sequins, like right here, don't have any on your tail because they will slide right off. The first thing we're going to do to begin the necklace is chain two. So we're going to start with just a basic single crochet. So this chain two, we're going to skip that first chain and we're going to single crochet into the second chain. This is just going to kind of create the base to begin our necklace and also something to join it in with at the end. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull out a loop. And this is the beginning of the Solomon knot or the love knot. When I pull it out, I want to pull it to the length that I want my finished loop to be. So I can make it this tall, I can make it this tall, I can make it just as big as I want. I think I'm going to make it about as big so that my uh, sequin is right in the middle. So it, whatever length you want, um, a couple ways to keep track is to grab something that you want the loop to be. So maybe if I wanted it as long as my scissors here, I could put it at the end and then pull it to this dot if I wanted. Or I could take a piece of paper, oops, losing it. Or I could take a piece of paper and mark it and then pull it out every single time. So if you want super consistent lengths, find something that you can measure your loop with. Otherwise, if you're like me, we're just going to wing it. I'm going to pull this sequin down a little bit here. Oh, that's from another sequin. Never mind. So depending on how long you want it, so I don't want it super long, um, make it as long as you want. And then the next step is to yarn over and just pull through. So now what we have is a really long looking chain is the best way that you can remember how to work this. So if you look at the top, it looks like the V stitch and then if you look at the back where our sequin is it's like the bottom bump of a chain stitch. So the bottom bump is the important part because that's what we're going to work into next. So with this loop here we're just going to go ahead and insert our hook right through our big gap. So two loops on this side, bottom bump on the other side, we're going under that bottom bump. And then we're going to yarn over again and pull up our loop and now we have two loops on our hook so we're going to do another single crochet. So we're just going to yarn over and pull through two. So now we've got this long loop here. And you can move your sequins around if you want, however you want to have them placed. If you have the sequin yarn or any sequin yarn. You can see I have one right here. So I can move that back a little if I want it more in my loops. But we're going to keep doing that. So this is a super basic stitch. Let me pull that out a little bit because it keeps wanting to go next to it. So I'm just kind of eyeballing my loop length here and then I'm going to yarn over pull through one so the sequins get in the way just a tad but that's all right and then I'm going to go back into that bottom bump that's popping over here insert yarn over pull up a loop yarn over and pull through both so we just keep doing that we keep creating these big loops however long you want them yarn over from back to front, pull through, go through your bottom bump, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, and make a single crochet. So we're going to have these loops of three strands separated by these single crochets. And then hopefully our sequins will be nice and displayed as we work. So one thing to remember when you're working this type of stitch, um, yarn can really make it look different. So this is a silk yarn which is super drapey on its own. It doesn't, it's very um, formless I guess, like it, if you were to try to make something that has a lot of shape out of this, like a structured sweater, it would, it would not happen because it's naturally drapey. You would want wool for a sweater. 
So this is a great yarn for this project because you want it to just kind of lay flat. You want it to have that necklace look. So you can see it's got a nice drape where it falls automatically. If I'm using like an acrylic or a wool, I might get more of a fluffy texture. The loops might stand out more. And if that's what you want, you know, that's not bad either. But if you want it to look more like a chain for a necklace, then you want a drapey yarn. So a silk is a good choice. So again, we just yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through, go through the bottom bump, pull up. Yarn over. I'm doing like a big old yarn over because of these sequins. I don't want to, I keep doing normal yarn overs and I'm pushing my sequin back. So it takes a little extra care for these sequins. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do kind of a um, longer length, maybe an 18 or 20 inch length. So since we're using this as a necklace, or if you really want to do a ton of them and create like a really loopy scarf, you can do that. So that would work like in a wool yarn. But if you want it to look more like a necklace, Make it the length of like a normal necklace that you like, and then we'll come back and we'll join up at the end so you can see how we're going to create a couple loops of these. So just keep on making your Solomon knots until you get the length that you want. Okay, I just finished the length of Solomon knots that I want, so I did 18 of them for my first chain of the necklace. So now I'm ready to join. So what I'm going to do, instead of joining like in the first single crochet that I made, we have that kind of chain spot down here that's where I'm going to join because I want to kind of create this a little bit of length to um to where my end is because we're going to put a little a little wrapping around it that will be kind of decorative at the end so I'm going to yarn over pull through and pull through the loop on my hook and then you'll see that it's kind of like a long space here with stitches so that we're going to cover up when we're done so if you only want one loop go ahead and fasten off and fast forward to when we finish otherwise we're going to go ahead and we're going to start making a second loop now we're ready for our next loop one thing to remember also real quick make sure that you don't make this so small that it does not fit over your head so check that before you continue on before you make your next loop of stuff so that you don't have to rip it all out if the first one is not fitting over your head. So the next one's going to be a little bit bigger than the last. So I'm going to start off with a chain one and I'm actually going to single crochet into that single crochet that we did at the beginning of our project. And the reason being is because when I wrap this, I could just start doing the Solomon knot right from, um, from the join. You don't have to do the single crochet, but I want this part that I'm going to wrap up to be kind of fat. So to do that, if having these single crochets will create more thickness for when I wrap it, it'll be fatter and it'll look kind of a little cooler, I think. So if you want it a fat wrap, do single crochet. If you want a skinny wrap, just go ahead and start your Solomon knot. So now we're going to go ahead and start pulling it out. One thing I noticed that with these sequins, um, if you want your sequin to hang in the middle of your loops here, like this one, is let it sit right next to your stitch as you're pulling out your loop and then do your Solomon knot. So I'm going to move this one over here. Go in your back loop, pull up, single crochet, and then you can move this right up to the middle because it's right in the spot that you want it to dangle. So again I can do that with this one. I'll just push it up a little bit so it's in the spot I want it. And I'm going to yarn over, pull through, Make sure that this is below, the sequin is below where you're inserting your hook so it doesn't get caught in the single crochet. So again, I'm just going to keep doing these Solomon knots. I'm going to do, since I did 18 last time, I'm probably going to do like three loops. So I might do 20. I'll see how that looks um, when it's all the way around. I might do 22. So it's totally up to you, like how many strands you want how long you want them to be, how different you want each strand to be. So you can do one really short one and one really long one, however you want. So I'm just kind of um, just winging it again, you know, to, whoops, I'm about to do, oh no, wait, yeah, I'm wrong. I'm doing like a, two single crochets here while I'm talking. Um, so it's totally up to you how you want this to look. So just mess around with it, change them around, try different size loops, 
whatever you want, but I'm going to go ahead and go around and then I'll meet up with you at the end to show you what we're going to do for joining and how many um, loops I put into it. Okay, I just finished my second strand. So I did 18 on the previous or the very first strand and this one has 20 Solomon knots so it's a little bit longer and then we just need to join it up so we can make a couple more strands. So what I'm going to do because remember I want this area to be kind of fat so when I wrap it it gives it a little bit of bulk. So I'm going to join my round where I joined or in the slip stitch that I joined from the previous round. So normally like I'll join in the very first stitch to keep a straight seam but I'm going to go ahead and join right where the slip stitch from the previous round was. It's not super important where you join over here because we're going to be wrapping it up. So don't worry if you're like, I don't know which is the correct stitch. You'll see that it kind of creates like this rectangle that I'm getting from the previous single crochet from the last Solomon knot and then the first single crochet here. So just as long as you get your blob, it does not really matter where you're joining. So don't stress too much about it because we're going to cover that whole thing at the end. So I'm going to keep making strands and I'm going to probably keep them about the same lengths as these. I want them to kind of build up on each other. So I'm probably going to do some more 18 Solomon knots and some 20s. You'll see that the difference in size here, I did these chains a little longer than these. So I'm going to vary the size of my knots. I'm going to um, just kind of build up this area so that they're all kind of stacked on top of each other so that when it's done it looks like nice and bulky and the sequin should show up real nice. So this is a totally like how you want to see it. So hold it up after each one or hold it up as you go so you can see if you like the lengths of everything. If you want to do just one strand that's all you need for a necklace or you can just keep building it and building it. So I'm going to build it out. I'm going to keep doing the same exact thing where I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet in the single crochet of the spot before because once we wrap this it's going to squish down so it's not like going to be this fat just remember we're going to squish it down and wrap it so you can keep building and building as much as you want and it's going to going to have like a nice little spot where we wrap it all together at the end so keep going as many strands as you want i'll come back after i get the amount of strands i want and then um, i'll put it in the pattern in case you like the way mine looks and then we'll go ahead and finish it off with the wrapping. Okay, I just finished the last strand of the necklace. And I did seven strands all together of the Solomon Nuts. And they're just different lengths. I did 18 and 20 for um, each of them. So depending on what I felt like that time. And you'll see that they're all different lengths down below. Even though they're all the same amounts. I varied the length of the actual Solomon knot, So they changed the size a little bit. So I would kind of make a strand and then I would bring it around and hold it up so I could see how it was draping. And then once I liked how it was draping, I um, slip stitched it and started the next one. So now that I'm finished and I want to make my ending um, wrap, I'm going to fasten off. So I'm going to go ahead and just yarn over and not yarn over, just chain and pull it long. And because I want some sequins, in the wrap part I'm um because I could just pull this really long and keep all the sequins out of it and use that to wrap my ends but I want some sequins in my wrap so I'm going to cut this short and wrap it into my actual wrap <laughs> a lot of wrapping so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a length of my yarn and I'm going to start I'm gonna squish my stuff down here so squish your ends together and you're just going to start wrapping the um, yarn around that end and you're just going to keep wrapping it and wrapping it until you like how it looks. So it could be a very thin wrap, just one layer if you want, or you can keep wrapping it until it's nice and thick, however you want. Put as many sequins in the wrap as you want, um, whatever you choose. So I'm starting at this end, but then I'm going to start wrapping with the other end. So I'm just going to keep wrapping it around and pull it nice and tight as you wrap. And then we'll um, tie it off and stick the ends inside. So I'm going to keep going and I'll show you how it looks when it's done. I've got my wrap all done. You can make it um, wider if you want or skinnier, however you like. But once you get to the point where 
you like what you have, you're going to take the two ends that you have left over. Um, if you use more than one strand, then just uh, wrap them under as you wrap new strands. So if you're like, oh, this isn't fat enough, grab another strand, keep wrapping, wrap any ends that you have from the previous wrap, and then make a double knot with the two ends that you have left. And then notice that also, um, important thing, end at one of your endpoints. So keep wrapping till you get to the end of one of your sides and then take the two ends after you double knot it, thread it on a yarn needle and run it right underneath your whole wrap to hide those two ends. So then your, um, your little loose ends are not visible. So I'll do that and then we'll look at the end product. My tails um, ran underneath the wrap. So if you're not, if you're using a sequin yarn and you don't like the look of the sequins on the wrap, you can make it much cleaner by um, pushing all your sequins down and just using the yarn. Totally up to you. I like the look of it because you can either have this, did I miss an end? Oh, I did miss an end. Hold on, let me fix that real quick. Where's my yarn needle? So you can see how that looks. Oops. Okay. So I take it and then I just run it right underneath as far as I can get it under. And then wherever I poke out is where I'm going to cut it off. So I pull it through and then take my scissors and pull nice and tight so that the end will ricochet back inside so it's not sticking out in case it's gone. And then you can either wear it with this in the back or you can hold put this part in the back and have the the little wrap on the side so it's got a couple different ways that you can do it so um, that is the end of the Solomon knot scarf if you have any questions leave them below and thank you for watching